Hello, law friends. Dapper Driver here, and welcome back to some PTCGO action. We're gonna start putting more of these up. We're gonna go back to that uh, that way we were doing it before. We open up a box, we take those cards, we put them in a deck, and see how well it works. So, um, with that, I'm excited to play ourselves some Thunderous GX with um, if I no, but it's I got rid of that card. That was a good idea. Um, let's go find it. Tornadus GX. There we go. So we're playing the Forces of Nature GX Premium Collection Box. We are playing what we got in that. So we are playing ourselves a Tornadus. We are playing ourselves... Well, that's extra. We are playing ourselves the Thunderous. We are playing ourselves the Mewtwo that we pulled from the box. Just because we pulled it. Um, something else that had a little bit of synergy with what we were doing, so we decided to pull it, um, and throw it in here. But here's the list, guys. I will, of course, copy that down the clipboard and then put it in the description box below if you guys are interested in playing this list. Now, I will say that, uh, this is based off of a list that I got off of LimitlessTCG.com. Um, it is from the Japan Nationals event. It is the uh, Marshadow, Dusk Main, Necrozma list. Um, obviously, I took out the Milotics, I took out the Dusk Mains, I took out the Dialgas, and I mixed it around for my own use. I also took out the Shamans, Battle Compressors, replaced Battle Compressor with Sophocles, Shamans with Marshadows, um, and stuff like that. Other than that, the deck's pretty similar. You know, you want to get your. Your monsters in the discard you want to be able to attack with uh more shadow and what I, my favorite piece i put in this was the tapu coco promo here because if you have a tapu coco promo in the discard and a dce on your more shadow with the anti on the board you are mi at minimum attacking for 40 and spreading 20. you saw that choice band we have down here on it that's attacking for 70 and 20 to the whole bench that is just craziness. I think that makes it better than Buzzhole, really. But, you know, with that, let's go over the list. We have one of our Nature Guardians in Tornadus GX. The Gust Attack for 50. Pretty good attack for a double colorless energy. Wild Fury does 90 plus 30 for every head you face. Flip a coin until you get Tails. Does 30 more damage for each head. So, you get one, you're already hitting for 120. With... Uh, Marshadow, if you're attacking, if you're using that attack and get one head, you are taking out a Zorark, which is wonderful. I um, mean, the Destructive Cyclone does 130 and then discards all the energy. So if you have a Mon that you're facing off against that just has a ton of energy on it, you can just Destructive Cyclone and just get rid of it all. And it's really good. I think it has a lot of, uh, kind of helps when you're kind of falling behind. Um, so, uh, that's good. We have the NC to boost the, with the Princess Cheers, to boost the attack damage of Mars Shadow. So, why not? We need that extra damage, so we should be playing the NC. Mars Shadow GX, um, with the Shadow Hunt is the main ability. We do get shut down by Garbodor, but I think we have ways out of that, but we'll see. Um, you don't really use Beatdown. You don't really use Peerless 100 Blows. I know I wish I kind of could throw one Fighting Energy, so I could use that. Um... But it's not a big deal. The other two have really good GX attacks as well that you plan on using. Um, there's the other Marshadow Shadow we play too. We play that Coco for the Flying Flip. It's just such a good attack. Why not play it? The Free Retreat helps as well. Thunderous charged itself up. Electro Ball does 140. That's a Vanilla 140. Very good. And then Thundering Hurricane does 100 times each heads that you flip after you flip 4 coins. So you can do 400 damage with Thundering Hurricane. Um, and that is craziness. You will never do that, though. So, the one thing that's unfortunate about these two natures, uh, nature forces is that they're both coin flip, coin flip bonds. I did not put a Victini in here, unfortunately. Um, because that means I could really be, like, for the numbers. But I didn't really think about it, and I'm not going to now. We have two more shadows here for that let loose. It's not as good as Shaman. But it will suffice in especially a standard deck, which are not slightly, or slightly not as fast as as expanded decks. Um, but I like more shadow in here. And then Mewtwo we pulled in the box itself, so we decided to play it. And Psychic is not 
a bad attack so why not use it it attacks for dc just like a bunch of other things so why not and then tapu lele you'd be surprised how many times energy drive is the best attack on the board but it is so we play three of these guys because one we have them um but two because it just helps the deck set up quicker and be better um, in the long run. Um, but we may not use them exactly right away. They're really just to get out the supporters. Um, we also got rid of Rhea Seekers, Trainers Mails, and upped our supporter counts. Uh, we do have some specialty items like Counter Catcher for behind in prizes. Field Blower to take off those tools. Stuff like uh, Garble Lock is something we can get rid of with this, but it's also just a... Marshadow does not have a lot of HP, so you want to take out tools that are going to knock him out super easily. Uh, we have four max elixirs because we play a lot of basic energy and a lot of basic mons, so we play max elixir to maximize the attachments on those mons. Rescue stretcher, I believe we only play one, but we actually play two because you know sometimes your main attacker here is Marshadow, and if it goes down, you want to bring it back. So you have two rescue stretchers for that. Four Ultra Balls, four discarding and searching for your Pokemon. Has that multi-use like that. One Brooklyn Hill to pull out some Marsh Shadows. Uh, and to counter Parallel Cities. One Parallel City to counter your opponent's stadiums. Um, as well as block lock down their bench. Uh, you got Cynthia. We got three of those for general draw support. One Delinquent. That's a spicy tech in here. Um, four Guzmas because you can never have too many Guzmas in your deck. Three N, I believe. No, it's only one N. Only one N. I should have memorized this deck, right? One N, because sometimes N is just the best draw supporter you can get. If you want to limit your opponent down, you can have that one N to be able to do it. And then three Sycamores, or four Sycamores, because we are pretty aggressive. We want to discard lots. And then three Sophocles to replace those three Battle Compressors. Gives us some draw support, but also allows us to discard. We also have two Choice Bands, two Float Stones, four Devil colorless energies and nine basic lightning energy and that is the deck like i said it will be down in the description below we are going to go ahead and check this out on the um the ladder here called nature's shadows and you guys can name it whatever you want if you guys end up uh, getting it and changing it around let's go ahead and take this to the ladder and see how well it can do we might get stomped we might do all right but we're going to go see right now so we are facing a Psychic Water Metal Dragon deck. Psychic Metal Water Dragon deck. I, I don't know what this could be. Could it be a Malamore deck with Octillery maybe? Because that's a, that's a lot of types. It's a lot of types to be messing around with. So we do... Oh, we start things off with my Shadow. We're getting kind of a bad start. So I think it's the RNG of the game today is just like no we're not going to give you that so we get a marsh shadow start with just not ideal at all we're facing metagross so let's see how that works out for us thank you thank you you are blessed thank you trico 891 you have blessed us with an n on turn one when our hand was pretty dead this is something we might be able to actually work with we can throw down the tornadoes Max Elixir, play down an energy, Cynthia to keep that counter catcher for later. Um, so I'm not not mad about this. Um, let's go ahead and try this first. We miss, we whiff, we whiff. I totally like to throw that on there. And then let's just Cynthia keep these few cards back here so we can get them later on. Not bad, we do get the DCE, and we get the Parallel City. The question is, to Parallel City or not? Um, Metagross has... This is Ultra Necrozma Metagross, isn't it? Pretty definite. Might be regular Necrozma, too. A little bit of it all. Um, so these guys are not the problem. I will say that outright. Um, we did use our... We did use our uh, supporter already, though, so I guess we'll keep the Ultra Ball. Actually, I got a I got a cheeky play here that I kind of want to do. Um, we have more Guzmas than Cynthia, so I guess I'm going to choose that. And this is less than ideal, I will say. Um, 
It gives me one more card and them a lot less cards to work with, so I figure why not. And we can still attack next turn by attaching a lightning energy. We have a float stone even to move this into the active if we so need to. Um, we'll put that down for now and end our turn. See what our opponent can do back to us. I think limiting them to four cards or five cards is pretty good strat early on here. It's like playing a... a uh, they would have that. But I'm okay with them wasting it on that considering I could have also had the field blower down. Well, not the field blower, the float stone down. And they didn't get that... Uh, they didn't get a hold of that one because I had the choice band that they wanted to get rid of. So they did top deck that Cynthia even though we limited their hand. That probably made it easy to decide. So we'll be ultra balling an ultra ball for an ultra ball. I'm kidding. I don't know what they're ultra balling for. Probably a Lele um, to be able to... Uh, Set up their bench. They want a full bench here. But that's why I'm keeping the, the uh, Parallel City down too. But they actually just opt for the Triple Veldoms. This is interesting. Because um, we can charge here or we can uh, gust here. The question is what's the better play? I mean no matter what I guess we're doing this. Charge, I still have to wait for another energy the following turn. This one I can at least gust for a few turns if I need to. So I guess we're going to do it that way. But we are drawing dead now. So let's just go ahead and gust away. Put some early pressure down here and see what we can do. They are probably expecting this Beldum to go down. Kind of sucks that we only hit for 50 and not 60. More Shadow Start was really kind of rough to us. They do get the Sycamore and throw two, try right, two Metagrosses away. They could not get their Rare Candies out to be able to set up and just own. So they're going to Ultra Ball. They are starting to get after it here. Going to throw that Matang down so they can ram for a few extra damage maybe? I guess not. So they got three Beldums sitting here. It's super slow start. No, metal energy down on the Matang. Now, is there a way we can take that out? There's not. See, that's what's kind of unfortunate about this. Is that's definitely the target you want to take out um, in case they have a Metagross. Metagross is a lot harder to take out than that thing. So I'm tempted to Guzma, but I'm in top deck mode. So I think I'm just going to go for the knockout here. Gotta hope they don't top deck that uh, Metagross here. Or have it in hand. It looks like they have it in hand. Otherwise, they would not promote the Matang. Oh, they got the Ultra Ball for the Metagross. Okay, now they're going to Algorithm, probably. Oh, Tapu Lele. So, they're noticing I'm drawing dead, so they're probably going to grab a Sycamore here. They don't want to end because it helped me. Cynthia also works. He must have really liked that card in their hand. So they get a fresh hand of six, and we're going to see what they do now. A rescue stretcher for those Metagrosses. They're going to evolve into one right now, as expected. But our deck is not working well at all either, so... Like, I think we're drawing deader than they are, and they're drawing pretty dead. They get the Metagross set up. It is ready to play now, and it's actually going to one-shot us, I believe. Oh, if they have another energy, it's going to one-shot us. I don't think they have another energy. 
And there goes the algorithm. We can actually probably grab a Lily of our own this turn and go ahead and end those five cards away and have it where they wasted their GX attack. That also should allow us to get um, another energy on Tornadus, and we can probably Destructive Cyclone to take out all those energies on Metagross. They will get one. They will get one back, but that's not terrible, I would say. It will set them back, and Parallel City is not a bad addition. Go ahead and throw out whatever we have to grab a Lele. And just verify that that N is in here. It is, because that's what we're going after. This is not an ideal board state at all for us, but we definitely need to slow down our opponent for now. Which means let's disrupt the hand. We don't want them having those five cards that they exactly want. So we're going to throw down the Parallel City. And N here for five new cards. We get cards. That's a good thing. And we could destruct a Cyclone here, or we can Wild Fury. Uh, Wild Fury, I mean, has a chance to knock out, but a very far chance to knock out. We can definitely Destructive Cyclone, though, but they will most likely have the Max Elixir in hand. Um... So I guess for now, we'll attach the Lightning Energy. And I think we're going to destruct a Cyclone because I don't think they're going to be able to get three energies on it next turn. But they will be able to max potion it. Sorry, I was reading something, and uh, they did get two energies back on the Metagross, but can they get the third? They did max potion it, as expected. Not mad about that. I knew that was coming. It's going to be a long, tough matchup, though, for us. Ooh, they're going to Guzma out something that cannot retreat. This does not bother me. Nice. Um, this is a little unfortunate. What can I do here? Like, I feel like I can throw down the Coco, but I also feel like I want to throw away the Coco. Um, no matter what, in order to retreat, I need to drop this here. And I'm going to probably drop Coco down and throw a energy on it if I can. And Cynthia for different cards. We do get the choice band. That's something. This is where I wish the more shadow section of this deck was working, because that'd be an extra 20 damage in the knockout on Tapu Lele. But with that, we will go ahead and retreat into the Tornadus, and we're just going to Wild Fury here. And see what happens. 120. Which is fine. We're going to 120 again for knockout. Uh, but we're definitely doing a two shots on these metagrasses. Not much we can do other than that. They do get the metagross back up. Geotech system. So if they can attack, and they are going to one-shot our Tornadus. And that leaves us with nothing left. These max potions are killing us. Max potions are killing us here. They do get the Alternate Cosma up now. They, they have enough energy to sweep. They have enough energy to sweep here. So as of right now, Metagross cannot attack this turn. Um, they can only get one of the energies back. Thanks, dude. You're a little late. 
Um, problem with leaving this thing in the, the bench spot is it, re it resets it so they can just retreat and go back at it again. Um, especially with the energies on it, which doesn't work out very well. Um, I think we're going to try it this way. And I think I'm actually going to hold my hand for right now. Because I'm not sure if I want to play Cynthia, Countercatcher, or what. Um, I already had an energy attached for the turn. So there's not much else I can do. So I might as well... I think I might as well charge here. This could be a massive misplay. Um, showing this deck at its absolute worst, really. But... Um, Right now, I feel like I'm forcing them to find a Guzma, rather than forcing them to find a way to retreat, so. There's more ways to retreat than there is to pull something out of the active and put it back in the active. Um, so now they have to find the the thing to pull, the Guzma to pull it out, and the Lele to retreat it. Never mind. They just, they just have the setup. That's a waste of a Geotech, by the way. Not much I can do about that. So Metagross has the perfect numbers to take out my whole deck. Get another Marshadow. Um, could definitely pull up a Lele, but what good is it going to do us is the question. When this Metagross just has the game. Um, so we will Sycamore here. We are down in prizes. The counter catcher is useful. But just not ideal at this point. Um, we're going to make it where they have to have another Guzma here. And that really seems like our only option, unfortunately. We could definitely rescue Stretcher the Mars Shadow back up too, by the way. So let's go ahead and do that. And I probably didn't play this ideally, but more than likely, you don't expect to see Metagrosses against you. So they will... Okay, they're going to Guzma Max Potion again, most likely. Grab the same stuff. So with that... Nothing we could do once they got the Metagross set up, which is kind of ridiculous. This had the exact cards they needed, even after us getting rid of everything. But yeah, that's not that's how you not don't play the game. Um, I mean, it was cool to see the Thunderous and Tornadus right at the beginning, but for it to be like half the game before we see a more Shadow really just set us back. Set us back big time in that deck. Um, there's tons of ways to get out the Marsh Shadow too. So just a little unfortunate on those pulls. Like it just did not work well. So we're going to try one more. But if we come to the same issue, I'm just going to post it as is. That is what the deck is. Not much we can change about it if that's the way it wants to work. But I know if this deck works well, it works well. I will say that. Um, they got a lot of dark energies. I feel like we're playing Guzzlord. I feel like we're playing Guzzlord. They did not get a start on that game. Um, so that doesn't count, I guess. We'll try one more time here. Um, if we can't find anything, then I'm kind of... I'm okay with just posting it as is. It is what it is. It did lose to Metagross, but you... We'll hardly see Metagross. It's still a fun deck to play. Um, but I just like dead drew completely in that game. And I'm guessing that is the reason why Shamans are played over Marshadows there. Because Marshadow, you know, shuffles back in and gives you four cards. But usually, if those four cards are, are the same bad cards that you had before, that's ridiculous. Um, 
not much you can do about it. Um, it just doesn't help. We're gonna start with the battle lele for this one though. Another mulligan, but is our opponent going to scoop or are they gonna stay? That is the question. So they did choose an active, okay, that's good. So they might actually play this one out. Okay, let's draw a card. Coco, I'm okay with that. Because now I can do some pressure stuff. Get that lightning energy down. Throw that down, and I'm going to keep that. So we're going to Sophocles, a Sophocles in an energy. To get more cards, we get the more shadow. And at this point, that's Mew Bait, unless we're charging it up. So let's hold for this turn and see what happens. But we got a Coco, fully powered, so that's a good thing. Worst case scenario, we can Guzma attach the lightning and just Electro Ball for game. Um, but not anymore, because they pulled out their type of Coco. They get the Bursting Balloon on the Mew. They're already noticing that that is definitely the one to keep. They're going to Sycamore their whole hand. They had Guzmas, Field Blowers, a bunch of stuff in there. 110. Little unfortunate I can't take that thing out this turn. But that is what it is. Um, anything we can use here? Not really. Um, I can flying flip. Put this thing down. Put the choice on it. Um... Looks like we're using this to retreat. And you have a pretty big hand. We're going to end that down to six cards. So I just didn't really want to throw away all those cards. We do get a uh, max elixir here. We whiff it hard. And it looks like we're just going to Coco for... Can't Coco. It's too much damage. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pass on the Coco because trading 20 damage for 60 damage is just not ideal. Especially when you normally one shot a Mew. You can normally one shot a Mew. So it's just not worth it to try that. The Bursting Balloon accepting the 60 damage so that they can one-shot the Coco back. They do get Energy Lotto. Probably looking for a DCE. We'll see if they hit it. If they don't, a Fairy Energy. A Fairy Energy. They, oh, they play the, the... This is the Coco spread, and that's why... They're hoping to protect the Mew again. Um, but I'm fine with them sinking all their resources into Mew, because Mew is... Easily one-shotted. Um, they do get more, though. They have nothing spread here. They're going to encounter for the exact card they want. Which is another Mew. Okay. They have a bunch of free retreaters here. Um, I guess we're going to throw this on the Coco. We can Sophocles, Mewtwo, and Sycamore for four new cards. We get the Float Stone. That's a plus. And we can put Tornadus in the uh, in the discard as well this turn. So we can save that Lightning Energy and just go into Coco. Um, we're actually going to Electro Ball here. Get rid of that Mew. 
take a take the first prize card activate their counter catcher and activate counter energies and all that jazz so to get the other Mew down they get the double colors on the top of Coco so I'm not super worried about I know that if I uh, if I have Marshadow up there with the DNT on the bench it Almost Oko's Tapu Koko pretty easily. They get the Necrozma down? Yeah, they're hoping to Black Ray. Especially with all the low HP mons I'm playing here. Um, I think the Necrozma is the, the fattest. So I'm tempted to bring that out. I think I will. I'm gonna throw out the Tornadus. And I guess the Cynthia. And grab that the Ansi. I think we're just going to Guzma out the Necrozma. And actually it might be better to go for the two shot on this. We're going to go for the two shot on the Necrozma. Try to get really far ahead here. Because for us, worst case scenario, our Coco does go down here. And if our Coco goes down, we have access to that attack. And we can stick a more, get a DCE, and attack for flying fit, flip for 40 damage. Another Guzma, so we can take out the Necrozma now. Before it even becomes a threat. So I will do that. Try to get ahead of this thing. There's our DC we needed. And an Ultra Ball. Just to help out. Pretty sure they're just going to flying flip again. And we will start swinging with more Shadow. Double, double counter energy. Oh, so they can use Necrozma's attack. Use that Black Ray. I see their play now. I see their play now. Um, they don't quite get the knockout though. They don't quite get a knockout though. But that's all they need Necrozma down there for. Now it's just free prizes. Oh, and the Bursting Balloon, nice. This does not bother me too much, though. Um, I mean, I can see why the Mew is kind of the problem here. But I'm pretty sure I could Lele Guzma and, like, take the Coco out, almost. I'd probably bring the Oranguru in. It's the heaviest, and I don't quite knock it out. Um, what do I have down here? I do have a Tornadus down here. Um, and a Mew. Mewtwo. I just hate that bursting balloon. It kind of hinders me every single time. Um, I guess the question is... I guess I'm going to keep everything. We're going to Cynthia here. So here we get. We kind of get the same exact hand here. So, I can't afford it with that. Needed a Guzma there. Alright, here, I'm going to take the threat off the board, which is Mew. Mew is the threat. I will happily give a prize away for 
Mew to be off the board. We'll put this Coco up there since he has free retreat. But I think they're just gonna promote Coco and try to take out the Marshadow to get three more prize or two more prizes here. Which is fine because we can just rescue stretcher the double color set again. And then it hits for kind of big numbers. But, oh, what we want to do is take out the Necrozma, though. So we want... Kind of want to destruct the Cyclone. Or something like that. Um, unfortunately, we do not play Counter Energy. Or, or we don't play, I mean, Rainbow Energy. So we cannot, you know, top up here. That would be kind of a fun play to play. But it's not an option. They are digging, digging through that luggage. They're really hoping to are they gonna attack with uh Lele here instead? They think they got the double knockout they don't, but they could get Lele up to like one fifty, so it's a coco away. I don't think they quite have it. I think they need one more spread turn. I think they need one more spread turn. Oh, that does do enough to knock out both of them. I see your play. I see your play. So that does leave me in a rough spot. That leaves them with one prize to go. And I gotta figure out a way to take my final two right now. We do get the rescue stretcher, which is part of it. I think we will go ahead and grab that. Nope, grab the Marsh Shadow. Put that down. Double color this it up. And the problem is I want to do both of these. Um, we're going to march Shadow. Let loose. Gives us the choice, man. Which is not quite what we wanted. But we can use it. Ah, I can't parallel. I can't parallel because... They'll just give her to their Necrozma. Um, although I can't knock it out anyways. So I feel like it's necessary to let them take the Necrozma. Yeah. What's this? Oh, Potown. Yeah, that doesn't do anything. We'll let them give her to the Necrozma. But I'd rather use it than lose it. Doesn't really lower their damage at all. They don't play those three types. Now this is fun. I can take out the Tapu Lele, but Tapu Lele is not the the problem here actually. So I'm not too worried about it. I think I just go in here with this one. And then take out this Coco and then take out the other Coco with the counter catcher. Seems to be the best option. 20, 40, 60. Um, yeah, that takes it out. I believe Psychic takes it out. Yeah. Psychic takes it out. There's the card we're looking for, the Guzma. So, unless they have a way to take out this Marshadow, I don't foresee them being able to take the game here. Okay, they're gonna instruct 4 3. And they're hoping that their double colors is in there. Double colors doesn't help you right now, though. 
That just clogs up your deck. Um, and us down to one. That is a very good play. But unless you retreat this Coco, I have game, I think. Rescue Stretcher for a Lele, maybe? For a Mew. I was like, that still doesn't, st still doesn't fix it for you. I even got the Guzma on top of it too. I got the Guzma on top of it just for BP. So that was, that was not a bad match, I think. Not a bad match. So I think I'll leave you guys off with that. Um, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Uh, I guess we'll take one last look at the deck after I level up on the ladder here. I got it. 50 coins. Okay, let's click on the deck. Click on the deck. There you go. One last look at it. Um, like I said, it can work when it works. and it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, I know we didn't get to see Tornadus or Thunderous too much. But uh, that is what it is, and this isn't clicking at all for me. So, thank you guys. This has been Dapper Derby. I'll bid you guys a low law, and I hope to see you guys in another video. Bye-bye now.